now we will understand the concepts related to national income i mean these concepts are very much applicable or required when we are calculating calculating the national income right right to understand the meaning of national income the concept of concepts some of the basic concepts are required so among them the first one is domestic territory right so definition is it is different from geographical or political territory of a country good morning students welcome back to clutis is right today is our 45th day so today we are going to start the new subject that is economy right so as you all know economy is very important for the point of uh, from the point of view of examination because uh, many questions approximately you can ex expect around 20 questions uh, the number may vary uh, from year to year but on an average you can expect 20 questions from the economic subject so including economic survey economic survey and budget right so from the current affairs aspects you also try to cover these two economic uh, survey and the budget right so apart from that the static uh, topics <coughs> what all are there including the sectors of economy economy and also the industrial sector the service sector in that ipr etc so all these are important including balance of trade bot so try to have a good analysis or good understanding of all these topics so today in today's class we are going to study about the basic concepts of economy because to further understand uh, the aspects of economy first you should be familiar you should be familiar with the basic concepts uh, so that's why i am completely dedicating this uh, class to uh, understand the basic concepts of economy only right right so if we understand the primary aim of economy it is to fulfill the diverse needs and the desires of its populace by providing goods and services so this is the primary objective of economy it is providing goods and services goods and services services to its populace right so this is the primary objective of the economy so this goal is attained through the production process which generates income within the economy so this fulfillment of goods and services it is provided through the production process right so in that uh, within that production process income will be generated right so this is the this is about economy and its definition meaning of income now we have seen that economy provides within the process of production so now we will understand the meaning of income right in the economy we receive different types of income we receive generally wages and salaries from for the employees there is income and wages or salary and wages right. similarly for the investment investment there is or we can say for the capital capital or investment there is interest so whatever the amount that is uh, loaned to some other person that particular person will pay interest <laughs> similarly we also receive gifts and donations from others without giving anything in return so all these are uh, kind of examples of income 
so broadly we can categorize these two i mean these incomes into two major categories first one is factor incomes next one is non factor incomes try to remember this terminology factor incomes and non factor incomes right so factor incomes there will be four factor incomes remember this one there will be four factor incomes the first one is labor right so it involves physical and mental efforts of human or uh, humans in production so human beings will use their mental uh, we can say ability and also the physical power to in the production process right so it includes tasks requiring varying degrees of physical and mental labor uh, compensation is time termed as wage or salary so for labor we will get wages right so it is considered uh, known as compensation of employees in the national income calculation so all these concepts what are we are going to study they are very important for the calculation of national income so in this in that aspect only we are study so in the terms national income calculation terms it is known as compensation of employees or simply it is known as wages next one is land so for land we will get rent right so it en land encompasses all the natural resources provided by the earth it includes surface area so these these are examples of uh, surface area and the subsurface elements also like mineral deposits petroleum etc and the elements above the surface also like sunlight and wind right so emergence of land ownership led to payment of land payment for land use known as rent so for land the income that is generated is rent next is capital so it compens uh, encompasses man made resources used in the production Uh, those are buildings machinery etc right so owners are compensated for use uh, for the use of capital is termed as interest so capital capital can be in the form of money also so a person who has having the monetary resource it will, th th that person will uh, uh, lend it to the entrepreneur so that entrepreneur who has taken the loan he will pay interest to the person who has lent him the money so capital earns interest right next is entrepreneurship so it involves initiate initiative to start and organize business so basically entrepreneurship it earns profit right so it is vital for initiating economic activity so entrepreneurs are who are starting or initiating a new business right so income is termed as profit here so whatever the income he is getting reward he is getting that is known as profit reflecting the rewards for innovation risk taking and organizational efforts so these are the four factors uh, and their respective incomes uh, wages for uh, labor rent for land investment sorry interest for capital and a profit for entrepreneurship right next another category of incomes is non factor incomes so these refer to money receipts received without any sacrifice on the part of the recipients examples include gifts donations charities etc so here no production activity is involved in obtaining these incomes so here no production activity is involved it is termed as transfer incomes because they represent the transfer of money without any corresponding provision for goods and services so these are these non factor incomes they are not included in the national income account so this is very very important point try right, to remember this the non factor incomes they do not they are not included in the uh, national income accounting because there is no production process involved no production process is involved here i mean nothing uh, uh, 
new is created in that process because of that reason the non factor income will not be included in the national income right now we will understand the basic economic activities what are the basic act activities that will take place in an economy first one is production so it involves adding value to existing commodities so when we were studying the industries also in the geography so basically we have understood that the manufacturing process whatever the industries are there they add value to the natural uh, resources that are existing or the natural things that are exist uh, that are there example we have seen cotton fiber is there it is converted into yarn right further there can be value addition to the semi processed goods also so here yarn can again be processed or made it into fabric so this is uh, the production process so we can call this process as a production pro process here uh, we are va adding value to the existing product or existing commodity it occurs through the combined efforts of factors of production so four factors of production we have seen so it uh, happens uh, adding value to the commodities happens through the combined effort of effect of four factors of economy right the value addition increases the usefulness usefulness of commodities so uh, as the value being added to the commodity there uh, we can say usefulness also increases here you can also understand from this example cotton has we can say limited use when it turned to yarn it has further uses and uh, over that when yarn is turned to fabric it has multiple users so in this way with the addition of value usefulness of commodity will also increase so here an example is given you can go through the example next important activity is consumption so whenever there is production there shall be i mean some i mean there shall be consumption of that production or produced goods and services also otherwise all that things will go uh, waste and there will be no demand for production so in this way total economic activity activity will be halted so because of that the consumption also very very important component in the economy right it refers to the utilization of produced goods and services for the direct satisfaction of individual uh, and collective wants so this is the definition of comp um, consumption it includes goods and services purchased by households for example food items clothing etc and by and by the government for collective consumption so goods will be consumed by the individuals and also for the government for the collective consumption of the people right so these are examples are roads bridges schools etc right this is second important activity third one is investment or capital formation right this repre represents the proportion of production left after consumption right so whatever the production is there after the consumption whatever is remaining that is known as investment or capital formation so it is used for creating physical assets like machinery equipment materials etc so it enhances the future production capacity of the economy right it supports further production activities right this is about the investment so basically investment is the uh, leftover after the consumption that is technically technically that is defined as the investment right so it is the uh, very very import, important the investment or capital formation is very important for um, future production and the capacity of the economy right right <coughs> these three are the basic economic activities first one is production next one is consumption and third one is capital formation or investment right now we will understand the interrelationship between the these three basic activities right production consumption and investment they are in interconnected and interdependent they increase production 
increase in production leads to higher consumption and investment so higher consumption incentivizes producers to increase future production so increase first one is increase in production leads to higher consumption and investment uh, further higher consumption it incentivizes production so when there is a consumption is higher there will be more demand for the goods and services so the producers will be further encouraged to produce more right so this is their next is increased investment boosts the future production capacity of the country contributing to growth and production and uh, production and investment so all these three aspects three basic economies they have positive relation positive relation because increase in one activity is leading to increasing the rest of the activities also so in this way they have a positive relation increase in one activity is leading to increase in the another activity we can say there is a positive relation or there is a proportional or we can say directly proportional relation directly proportional relation so without production neither consumption nor investment can occur these activities collectively drive income flows within the economy right so this is the correlation between the three basic activities of economy now we will understand about the closed economy versus open uh, open economy so some 5 to 6 years back there was a simple question in the prelims examination that so which of the following uh, explains the characteristic of a closed economy closed economy so there was a question so try to um, have understanding about these basic concepts also right if you see the closed economy it refers to a country with no economic relations with the rest of the world so we can say this is the ideal situation so, i mean if you see practically particular country will be definitely having some kind of we can say dependency or relation with uh, some other country in the globe in the world so this but this is the ideal example that a particular country it has no economic relation with the any other country in the world so best example i mean the country uh, that is close to to be called as a closed economy is north korea north korea so we can say it is practically uh, disconnected from each country in the world rest of the world it is not dependent on any other country for practical matters but in some aspects it is dependent on china i mean it has some interaction it has some interaction with china when it comes to uh, economic activities for that matter uh, they have some political um, we can say good political relations also so north korea can be called as a closed economy because it is not i mean it is not dependent on the world other countries that much it has only few economic relations relations with only few countries like china right this country is close to be called as a closed economy right so it is rare in the present day world only few examples are there we can say only one example right now that is north korea open economy if you see it describes a country engaged in economic relations with other nations so practically every other country except north korea it is having economic relations with at least one country in the world right so this has been further expanded with the lpg reform lpg reforms or simply we can say after the globalization 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 so during the after after we can say 1990s so every country is practically uh, dependent on the other countries so also after globalization the multilateral agencies like wto and imf they have emerged and their main goal is to especially the wto to interconnect the world when it comes to exchange of goods and services goods and services so this is the 
we can say difference between the open economy and the closed economy right characteristics if we understand of the closed economy limited international transactions limited to sorry limited to internal transactions so whatever they needs or demands of the people within the country they are met by the internal processes only uh minimal international trade is there right no borrowing or lending with other countries a little little to no movement of people across borders for economic purposes so these all these conditions uh, conditions to a large extent are fulfilled by north korea right if we see the i mean characteristics of the open economy involves international trade of goods and services yes that is uh, fulfilled by many other countries borrowing and lending occur between the countries yes this is also there movement of people across borders for trade employment tourism etc yes this is happening however some restrictions are still there uh in the movement of people across the borders of the countries still there are problems however this is happening right next is real and money flows take place between countries engaged in economic activities so the, these are the characteristic features of open economy right this is the difference between the open economy and closed economy another important cost concept is stock and flow so these concept is also important in the calculation of national income or simply gdp calculation we can say so you sh- should e should be aware of the concept concepts of stock and flow so stock if we see it is a quantity measured at a specific point of time examples include wealth population money supply etc so all these aspects are measured at a point of time we'll say at this point the population of india is this much at a different time the population might change so at this point the wealth of a Uh, particular person is this much so these things are uh, measured at a point of time those are called as stock next is flow so it is a quantity measured over a period of time right examples include the national income population growth etc so now uh, i say income of a person has increased this this much from january to december so it is it, it is being measured over a period of time of one year right so population growth so india's population has increased by 10% let's say for example from this year april i mean from uh, uh, to i mean 10 years back from 2009 to 2019 the population ha- population growth of india is this much 10% or 11% so in this way these things are measured over a period of time that is known as flow so it has a time dimension such as days months years etc so this is the concept of stock and flow next another important concept is circular circular flow of income so a definition if you see it describes the continuous movement of income and expenditure in the economy due to transactions between different sectors so one side there is income income is there on other side there is expenditure expenditure so there is a continuous movement of we can say money or value between income and expenditure so it is a continuous movement of income and exp- expenditure in the economy uh due to transactions between different sectors so this is uh, the definition of circular flow of income principles of circular flow of income if you see expenditure re- equals income so broadly if you see the total expenditure that is made by the people it is equal to income because i am spending some money some other person is receiving that as income so basically basic principle is expenditure is equal to income in an economy right so the expenditure of buyers equals the income of sellers one way flow of goods and services two way flow of money right right so this is one uh, this is another concept so one way flow of goods and services two way flow of 
uh, money this, this thing happens next is goods and services flow from sellers to buyers so the seller whoever is there he is giving me the goods or services i am paying him the uh, we can say uh, cost of whatever the uh, amount i mean cost is there for that particular good or service so that is becoming my expenditure is becoming income for that seller right money payments are uh, for these goods and services flow from buyers to sellers right so this is the circular flow of economy so if we see the components here first one is real flow real flow is it involves the exchange of factor services from households to farms and goods and services from uh, farms to household so one side there are households one side there are households and the other side there are farms or we can say co uh, companies also right so there is an exchange of factors of service between these two entities right households are there on one side farms are there on the other side so there is exchange of uh, transactions between these two right so here households provide factor services like land labor capital entrepreneurs ship to farms so here households are providing factor services services to farms Firm, firms produce goods and services to meet the demand of households so here the firms are producing goods and services right so this flow factors so the this flow of factor services and goods and services known as the real flow so whatever the flow is happening this is the real flow so i am showing it in the double lines right so the households are providing factor services to the uh, firms the firm is producing goods and services and it is giving to the uh, providing to the households this is real flow of uh, real flow next there is money flow also so it involves the valuation of goods services and the factor services in terms of money right households receive income uh, rent wages interest and profit from the firms for providing factor services all right so house households make payments to firms for goods and services this flow of money between firms uh, firms and households is known as the money flow right so whatever that is depicted in the red color that is known as real flow right so the individuals or households they are providing labor to the firms and in turn labor labor i mean the firms are producing goods and services for the need of the households this is real flow and there is a money flow so for providing of labor the households are receiving income four factor incomes those are rent wages interest and profit so that is depicted in green color and uh, to purchase goods and services the households are spending or doing expenditure they are spending money for purchasing the goods and services so in this way the money is being transferred to business or firms this is these two that are depicted in the green color they are known as money so this is known as the circular flow of economy right now we will understand the concepts related to national income i mean these concepts are very much applicable or required when we are calculating calculating the national income right right to understand the meaning of national income the concept of concepts <coughs> some of the basic concepts are required so among them the first one is domestic territory right so definition is it is different from geographical or political territory of a country right concept components of domestic territory if you see political frontiers it includes territorial waters also so the uh, 
i mean lot of uh, economic activity takes place in the territorial waters of the country right also we have eez also exclusive economic zone here also a lot of economic activity takes place so whenever the national income is being calculated these economic activities also included in the calculation of national income next one is transportation ships and aircraft operated by residents between countries it is also comprises i mean they also come in the domestic territory next is resource extraction fishing vessels vessels oil and natural gas rigs and floating platforms operated by residents in international waters are exclusive operation areas so these also included in the domestic territory next is international establishments such as embassies consulti uh, con- consultees and uh, military establishment they are loca- located in abroad they are so considered as domestic territory right so it excludes foreign establishments within the country and offices of international organizations within the country for example the embassies of foreign countries like embassy of usa embassy, embassy of france etc they are excluded from the domestic territory for the calculation of national income all right next is uh, another important concept there is a technical definition and it is being defined we can say ch- or changed for uh as per the requirement for the calculation of gdp or for that matter imposing of taxes imposing of taxes so this normal resident is a uh, definition of normal resident is also important because many of the people they will be residing in other countries though they are citizens of india but most of the time we can say more than half of the year more than 6 months at this time may vary they'll be residing outside the country right so they are generally considered as those they are uh, citizens of india they have the citizenship of india but for the majority of the year they will be residing outside of india so for uh, taxing purposes or for the purpose of calculating gdp they are known as nris non resident indians so the taxation uh, we can say there are exclusions and inclusions for this particular uh, category of persons nris non resident indians so for that matter we have to define the normal uh, normal resident of india so so it differs uh, from the term nationals or citizens it refers to a person who ordinarily resides in a country and has the their center of economic interest in the country only so if you see the nris they will be they might be having their major economic activity in some other country so that p- person will be excluded from the taxation or for the matter calculation of gdp right so wh- whomever the economic interest is not there in india composition if you see the uh, normal resident includes nationals or citizens residing in their own country for example indians living in india foreigners or non nationals residing in a country uh, for example non indians uh, non indian residents living in india so the people who are li- who are not the citizens of in india but they are residing in the country within the borders of the country and their major economic interest is there in india so that person is considered as normal resident right examples uh, if you see residency in india so nepalese individuals residing in india for over one year and engaging in economic activities like production com- consumption investment so in india they are considered as normal residents of india right next if you see residency in abroad abroad so indian citizens residing in abroad for example usa for over one year and engaging in basic income activities uh, there are treated as normal residents of that country not the residents of india right so they are considered as non residents of india nris so uh, the year for the purpose of taxation it is defined 
separately because normal year means that cannot be a complete year so if a person is uh, for example residing more than 6 months in other country or for in sometimes more than 9 months in other country that person is considered as nri and there are different taxations for that purpose right so this is about uh, normal residents next another important aspect is intermediate goods and the final final goods or finished goods so this is also a very important uh, aspect in calculation of gdp or national income first we will understand the intermediate goods so these goods meant for reprocessing or resale so if you see the example of cotton only so yarn we can consider it as intermediate goods so if you see the automobiles the tires so they are the this can be considered as an intermediate goods so tire further it is produced from processed and produced from the rubber tire it itself will be used in car or bike so this is tire is an intermediate good right so used in production process during in an accounting year characteristics if you see a inter an inter, intermediate good non durable goods and services used by producers so these are uh, these will also come under the definition of intermediate goods examples include raw materials oil and electricity coal fuel etc the, all these considered as uh, non uh, sorry intermediate goods uh, similarly ex, uh, goods purchased for resale are also considered as intermediate goods so goods purchased for resale for example the wholesalers they purchased the goods from the producers directly and again they resell to consumers so the goods whatever goods purchased by this wholesaler those are also considered as intermediate goods example in examples include rice wheat sugar they are purchased by a wholesaler and again they will be uh, sold to the retailer and that retailer again will sold to the consumers so in this process these are also considered as intermediate goods next another category is a finished goods definition if you see goods used for final consumption by consumers uh, for or for investment by producers they are known as the finished goods sorry fi or final goods they do not pass through the production processes and are not used for resale characteristics if you see bread butter biscuits they are consumed by consumers right so their classification depends on the usage of these goods examples milk is used by a sweet maker it is uh, then it is known as intermediate good but when consumed by a consumer if i am consuming milk that is known as final good so if we see the inclusion and exclusion of national income these two goods uh, intermediate goods and the final goods so the intermediate goods they are not included in the calculation of national income only final goods they are included because the value of intermediate goods is already included in the value of final goods so because of this reason to avoid the duplication or double counting the intermediate goods are excluded from the counting of national income right so this is about intermediate goods and final goods next another important concept is value of output and value added you should be thorough about these two concepts also first one is value output if you see the definition money money value of all goods and services produced including intermediate goods this is the value of output it is calculated as quantity into price so this is the formula for calculating the value of output it also includes changes in the stock or inventories so stock or inventory changes are there so it also includes those changes in the stock or inventory formula value of output is is equal to sales plus change in 
stock so sales plus change in stock that is the original formula to find out the value of output importance if you see it forms the basis for calculating national income we must deduct the intermediate consumption expenditure to avoid double counting we have seen the intermediate goods so we have to exclude them next if we see value added so the difference between value of output <coughs> and intermediate consumption expenditure this is the value added so from the value of output we are uh, minusing the intermediate consumption expenditure then value of addition will come formula is if you see value of i output minus intermediate consumption expenditure if you see the example if a farmer sells cotton worth of 500 to a cloth mill and the mill producer uh, produces cloth of cloth worth of 1500 with the cotton cost included the value added is 1000 rupees so this is uh, known as the value added right next is gross and the net measure also we should understand uh, in the calculation of national income so gross measure it includes all costs including depreciation also the depreciation is nothing but wear and tear wear and tear so for example if we are using we use machines in the production process of fabric or cloth so in that process we are producing cloth but the machinery that is being used it undergoes some wear and tear so there will be repairs also so after some time like say let's say after 20 years we can no longer use that particular machinery so every year some percentage of its value will be deducting that component is known as depreciation so in gross measures when we are calculating the gross national income or gross output we ignore this depreciation we do not consider this depreciation right so it includes all costs including depreciation so depreciation represents the decrease in the value of fixed capital assets during production process right value with depreciation included is termed as gross gross value of output and the gross value gross value added so opposite to that is net measure so it excludes the depreciation from the value so whatever the net value i mean gross value output is there when we minus the depreciation net value of output will come so from the gross value added if you minus the depreciation the net value added will come right right so depreciation is excluded from the gross measure then net measure will come right next another important concept is market price and a factor cost so market market price and factor ka, cost so market price definition is price paid by buyers for the goods purchased from the market so here the indirect taxes that are levied on the goods and services so for example now we have gst gst is levied on the goods and services so this market price whatever the consumer is paying to purchase a good or a services it includes the indirect taxes example is gst so it is uh, the indirect tax that is levied by the government it also included that so indirect taxes they are levied by the government on sales production and imports so when we see the imports the customs customs tax will be imposed so example is gst customs earlier excise tax uh, used to be there so now also on certain products excise uh, tax is still there it is not completely subsumed in gst right so for that for now you remember gst is there customs duty is there etc so uh, the feature of it is it increases the market price of commodities for example a, the price of a commodity is uh, 100 rupees and the gst let's say 10% so 10% of this value again will be included that is 10 so the cost of the product will become 110 rupees so it increases the market price of the commodity right similarly uh, government also gives subsidies to encourage production of certain 
products or certain category of products example so the farmers need fertilizers fertilizer production is a complex process so there is there will be generally we see the shortage of fertilizers uh, so to encourage the production of fertilizers further and furthermore the government provides subsidies so those i mean the major purpose purpose of subsidies subsidy is for this purpose so the definition if you see financial assistance provided by the government in the production process to production units it is aimed at encouraging production of selected commodities by allowing them to be sold at lower prices so whenever they are allowed to be sold at lower prices there will be more demand so there when there is a more demand the producers will come forward to produce more right next one is if we see the concept of net indirect taxes so it is the difference between indirect tax and the subsidy so the net indirect tax is uh, from the indirect taxes we have to minus the subsidies provided by the government right so next concept is factor cost or production at the factor cost right calculation uh, if we see value added at market price minus net indirect taxes so from the value added at market price we when we minus the net indirect taxes we will get the uh, i mean value at the factor cost alternatively we can also minus the indirect taxes and add the subsidies then value added at factor cost will come importance if we understand the production at the factor cost it reflects the actual value added by the producers right excluding the impact of indirect taxes and subsidies provided so this is used in the calculation of national income for that matter we will use both concepts uh, production at the factor cost also and production at the market prices also right next one is domestic income versus national income we can say gdp and uh, gnp right domestic inco- income definition if you see sum total of value added by all production units within the domestic territory of a country i mean within the territorial boundaries of the country we have seen other aspects also like uh, production happened in territorial waters or exclu- exclusive economic zone and also the <coughs> floating i mean whatever the activity happening within the definition of territorial territory that entire value addition is known as the domestic income it includes factor incomes earned by both residents and non residents adjustment adjustment to isolate factor income earned by uh, only by the normal residents within the domestic territory factor payments made to non residents are deducted right so these payments are termed as factor payments made to the rest of the world or o w right so through that we will achieve the domestic income right next is national income definition if you see the sum total of factor incomes earned by the national residents of any country within and outside the economic territory right formula if you see national income is equal to domestic income plus factor income received from the rest of the world minus factor payments made to the rest of the world this is the national income right next is net factor income from rest of the world so difference between the factor incomes received from the rest of the world and payments factor payments made to the rest of the world it is known as the net factor income from rest of the world relationship if we understand a uh, gross national product gnp is there so it is the d- gross domestic product at market price a uh, plus net factor income from abroad or net factor income from rest of the world next is net national product so when we minus the net domestic product uh, at market price plus net factor income from abroad or rest of the world next is 
net national product at factor factor cost it is net domestic product at factor cost plus net factor income from the rest of the world or abroad right this is the relationship so we are adding the net factor income uh, for uh, getting the national income right next another concept is nominal versus real gdp so nominal gdp money value of goods and services estimated at current prices current market prices that is known as nominal nominal gdp real gdp if we see value of goods and services estimated at the prices of a base year that is known as real gdp so real gdp it reflects the actual increase in production uh, providing a more accurate picture of economic performance because here the inflation the inflation uh, in goods and prices of goods and services that is neutralized in real gdp through a base year this inflation is uh, neutralized so this will gdp real gdp will give the actual or real picture of the actual growth in the economic process right now we will understand national income as an aggregate of uh, factor incomes uh, or we will see net value added at factor cost net value added at factor cost so it is generated during the production process by four factors of production that is land labor capital and entrepreneurship if we see the factor incomes first one is compensation for employees that is known as wages or salaries we have studied already so it includes the monetary and non monetary benefits received by the employees for the labor services provided by them examples include wages salaries bonuses employer contributions to provident fund accommodation conveyance medical facilities etc holiday trips etc all these will come under the compensation for employees next one is rent so rent is for using capital both in monetary and non monetary frame so income earned from lending the services of buildings and subsoil areas subsoil assets of production that is rent next is interest so income earned by providing funds to production units it excludes the interest payments against the loans given for consumption expenditure so this is the interest rent generally also comes from the land that is leased for the uh, uh, we can say the production activities next one is profit so it is given for entrepreneurs entrepreneurship right so income accruing to the entrepreneur for being bearing risks and uncertainties in the business process right so also residual income left after making the factor incomes the profit is residual income left after making the factor payments so it is compensation for employees rent and interest so after the these payments whatever that is left that is known as the profit right so after that uh, the entrepreneur will also have to make or pay some taxes so that is different thing we will understand it about it later for now the whatever the amount is left after payment of the rest of the three factor incomes that is known as profit right so on uh, one other another income category is there that is mixed income of self employed people so income generated by self employed in individuals like doctors lawyers farmers etc so it is self employed they are self employed individuals they provide both labor and the property in their uh, in their work so income is not clearly identified into separate factor payments so this is one uh, dry area is there or uh, gray area is there so we cannot uh, clearly classify the factor incomes here when people are self employed right so if we understand the national income uh, as an aggregate of factor incomes formula is national income is equal to compensation to employees that is salary and wages rent for land and interest for capital and profit for entrepreneurship plus mixed income plus net factor income from rest of the world so this is the definition of the national incomes alternatively we can also get national income 
so ndp net uh, domestic product production or product at factor cost plus net factor income from rest of the world this is known as the national income right further we can uh, uh, get the national income as an aggregate of fin final expenditure also so here we have calculated the national income national income as an aggregate of factor incomes uh, in this way i mean in the second uh, process we are trying to get the national income as an aggregate of final expenditure because because in the beginning we have understood that in an economy all the income is equal to the all the expenditure made by the individuals so now until now we have understood how national income can be calculated through the process of incomes so we know the concept that all the incomes are equal to all the expenditure also so national income calculated through the final expenditure a total of final expenditure that should equal the national income uh, calculated through income processes right so for the practical purposes uh, when the gdp is being calculated the ideal one way is not sufficient uh, calculating national income through the aggregate of incomes that is not sufficient so for some sector and sub sectors we use the national income calculated through the uh, final expenditure so the practical calculation of gdp or national income of india is combination of both of these uh, national income as an aggregate of final expenditure and the national income as an aggregate of factor incomes right so we have seen the national income calculation as a aggregate of factor incomes now we will see national income as an aggregate of final expenditure right income generation and spending if we see income generated during the production process in the form of factor incomes is spent by the factor owners on final consumption and investment goods right final expenditure classification if we see right first one is private final expenditure consumption expenditure it is made by the individuals right so individual purchases made by the households for non profit institutions serving households it includes goods and services used used for the satisfaction of household needs examples include consumer non durable goods consumer durable goods and consumer services second category is government final consumption expenditure so for the common uh, utilization co uh, common consumption collective consumption or collective utilization government will be uh, um, doing expenditure uh, for purchase of goods and services so expenditure on free services provided by the government to the people examples include police military educational institutions hospital etc these will come under this category third category is investment expenditure it is made by the entrepreneurs right so expenditure uh, by production units on the purchase of physical uh, assets further they can be used in the production process so categories uh, if we see in the uh, investment expenditure so gross business fixed investment it is spending by business units on new capital assets like plants machinery etc next category is inventory investment or stock investment so to increase net increase in the stock of raw materials semi finished goods finished goods etc third third one is residential construction investment spending on building house building and housing units fourth one is public investment government expenditure on infrastructure like roads hospital schools etc next one is net exports difference between the exports and impro imports that is known as net exports so national income uh, the definition of national income or calculation of national income here is the private final consumption expenditure pfce by plus government final consumption expenditure government final consumption expenditure plus investment expenditure by the companies or the entrepreneurs next net exports 
so this way through the expenditure method in this way we can calculate the national income so this is the formula for the national income uh, when we are calculating the uh, national income of a country so for the uh, practical purposes i have already said it is very difficult to calculate all these types of expenditures and also for that matter all the incomes that are we have seen when we are calculating the national income through the income factors of income method so some some areas the uh, expenditure will be considered for some sectors and sub sectors for a majority of the sectors the aggregate of factor incomes that will be considered so the combine with the combination of both these aspects uh, the national income will be estimated right uh, these are the aspects that are involved in the calculation of national income and also we have seen many other um we can say basic concepts of economy so these concepts if you are clear with these concepts you can further better understand uh, whatever the aspects that are coming in the economics it will be easy for uh, easy for you to understand the other major concepts that are going to come in the future classes right so this is it for today thank you thank you for joining the class uh, see you next time until then have a good day right see you next time